You're watching BBN Tonight on your official UK sports station, LEX 18. Presented by Central Bank, the official bank of UK athletics. Welcome back to BBN Tonight. Lee Kiefer is the most decorated women's foil fencer in US history, and right now she is preparing to head to her third Olympic Games while also in med school at UK. And somehow she still feels like she has unfinished business. She talked with our Maggie Davis. First American woman to earn the number one foil ranking, first athlete to win eight consecutive individual titles at the Pan Am Championships. You're a four-time NCAA national champion from your time at Notre Dame. You've been to 10 world championships and now preparing to head to your third Olympic Games. When you hear all of that and you look back at your career so far, what are you the most proud of and what is still left to accomplish? Oh man, well, when I hear all that, I first think I'm very old. I don't know where the time has gone, honestly. For me, probably my most glorious moment would be when I helped the women's foil team win gold at the Wushu World Championship. We've been on a team together for so long, me and, my, and the other members. So I think that one is the one that makes my heart the happiest. Going into Tokyo, I'm hoping for some gold medals, um, individual team, and my husband also fences. So if he brings back some medals, those medals are mine too. <laughs> in addition to training for Tokyo, you're in med school at the University of Kentucky. I know you said you're on a little bit of a leave of absence right now, obviously, with so much going on. But what led you toward that specific career path and why was UK med school the right fit for you? So I come from a family of physicians, my grandma, my parents, my sister, all of them are doctors. So I was brainwashed from a young age and here we are. Um, but really being in fencing and seeing people get injured and overcome these injuries, I think that's what started to push me in that direction and help develop that interest. And when I was applying to med schools, I just love Kentucky. Kentucky is my home and it just felt like the right fit when I went and I interviewed there. Now I am two thirds of the way through my third year before taking a leave of absence so I can make that final push for Tokyo. I'll start back school next February with the class below me and then keep working towards that MD. So I have to be honest with you, I didn't know a whole lot about fencing before I started preparing for this interview. So for people who are watching at home right now who also might not know a whole lot about this sport, take us to that moment when you're in the heat of competition. What is going through your head and what's your main focus? Fencing is a very dynamic sport. It has the physical component like other sports. Um, in order to be at my best game, um, first I focus on training. You know, I'm in the gym about, or I'm in the fencing gym about 15 hours a week, strength and conditioning about 10 hours more. Um, and then of course, nutrition plays a big role too. I am so excited and honored to be partnered with the Dairy Alliance and be a member of Team Milk. I absolutely love milk. I grew up drinking it and to this day I will have milk in my cereal, my oatmeal and in protein smoothies to get ready for my hard day of training. So there's like the physical component of being an Olympic athlete, um, but fencing is also very mental. A lot of what I focus on is my intensity. So if you're watching a fencing bout, obviously the movement is a little foreign, but then you might start to laugh when you see us yelling. And that's kind of a way that we like pump ourselves up and like get to that high level intensity where we wanna be at when we're competing. So I know we're all so tired of talking about 2020, but I think it's just been really interesting to hear how the pandemic affected athletes ability to train last year. Did you have to make any adjustments over the last year in terms of how you were able to do what you were just talking about training, nutrition, conditioning, all that sort of stuff? Definitely. Um, yeah, everyone across the board had to make adjustments. It was very, very scary in the beginning. When um, everything started coming on the news, we were actually about to go to our last um, Olympic qualifying tournament. 
And that was canceled. And then we were put in this position, like, we don't know what's going to happen. Are the Olympics going to be canceled? Um, and even though our club was closed down, you know, like we're scared to go into the grocery store. We actually, our solution was to build a fencing strip in my parents' basement. And my husband, my brother, one of my friends, Sammy, we trained together for a few months, just the four of us in the basement. <laughs> Now when you think about this moment, you're finally preparing to actually go to Tokyo. You'll finally have the chance to compete. What does it mean to you to head to your third Olympics and to represent the United States of America once again? I'm so excited. Um, I think I am a much more developed athlete. I'm smarter. I'm more physically fit. And I just have better perspective. So I think I just feel lucky and excited to be going there. So you mentioned your husband earlier, so I have to ask, what is it like that you're both going to Tokyo? You're both going through this training process together, and of course, you're both in med school too. It's incredible. To be honest, I'm spoiled. At my first games in London, we were already dating. So to be honest, I don't know what it's like to go to Olympics and not have like your biggest support system <laughs> with you in this dance. I'm very lucky in that respect, but there's a lot of day-to-day, -day, you know, grinding. We train a lot and we're each other's biggest motivators, but obviously like we can get competitive too. So I think we've grown a lot together and seen each other's um, best and worst parts. Well, good luck to you both. And thank you again for talking with us tonight. Of course. Uh, so excited for her. Yeah. I, I can't wait to watch her there. Stay right there. We have much more after this. You're watching BBN tonight.